Great Britain has been rocked by the greatest scandal of modern history. A cabinet member has resigned because of his improper relations with a model. Tomorrow, the British Parliament meets in what promises to be a historic debate. The outcome of this debate could very well influence the morals of the Western world for a generation, and it may affect the security of the Western world. For the past few months, Great Britain has suffered from one scandal after another until many youth groups are calling for a cleanup of morals among their elders. Sharing the British headlines this weekend are the racial problems and strife in the United States. Most Europeans have been surprised at the depth of racial feeling in America. Many Europeans are beginning to wonder if the seeds of revolution are being sown in the United States. One leader in Europe said to me this past week, the racial problem will never be solved apart from the love of God. I have decided that when I return to the United States in July, I shall remain at home for the next few months, preaching the gospel from one end of America to the other. I am convinced that the only answer to this overwhelming social problem is a religious revival. During the past few years, I've spent nearly half of my time in the ministry abroad, preaching the gospel in the jungle, in the great cities, and at the universities, in many languages. However, I have become so deeply concerned about the moral, social, and spiritual problems in the United States that we have decided to invest most of our time and energy for the next few months at home. We would appreciate the prayers of Christians everywhere as we plan a national strategy to reach as many people as possible in the United States and Canada with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here in Nuremberg, Germany, as Peter Schneider has already told you, we have seen a great moving of the Holy Spirit during the past week. Tens of thousands have come to the great tent seating 20,000 people in the heart of the great Zeppelin Stadium, which Hitler used for many of his mass demonstrations. Night after night, hundreds of people have come forward to receive Christ. We deeply appreciate the prayers of Christians everywhere for this crusade in the southern part of Germany. Through television, its impact has already been felt throughout the nation. As I read American, British, and German newspapers and keep up with news events through the Armed Forces Network on the radio, I have become deeply concerned about the recent drift of world events. There is no doubt that our world is changing rapidly. A common mistaken idea is the assumption that the social climate of the United States would not change very much. Peter was dealing with that kind of erroneous thinking when he said, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. In God's universe, there is no standstill. The stars move in appointed orbits toward their destinations. Even while the planets turn upon their axes and the tides flow in and out and the seasons change in their ceaseless rhythm, the universe is moving toward a rendezvous with destiny. In our lifetime, we are seeing nations merge, governments fall, revolutions change the maps of the world, and social revolutions of such immense magnitude that it staggers the imagination. And even our physical bodies undergo a complete change every seven years. The Apostle Peter struck a death blow at the perennial fallacy that all things continue as they were when he said, by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. The heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. When this earth, which is now restrained from judgment by the mercy of God, is ravished by the refining fire of his judgment, then ungodly men will begin to pray. Certainly the world is in for climactic changes in the future as we approach judgment. Think of it. The materialistic, cynical, godless, wicked men of our time will begin to pray. Men even behind the Iron Curtain that have led communism will begin to pray. Men who never before uttered the name of God except in profanity will be calling on him to save them in the midst of judgment. But then the Bible warns, it will be too late. It is written in Proverbs, because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded, but ye have said it not all my counsel and would none of my reproof. I will laugh when your calamity comes. I will mock when your fear cometh. 
When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distresses and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me, for that they did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. The Bible warns continually that there is coming a day of judgment when men will call upon him and it will be too late. God has given countless opportunities to repent of sin and to believe on his son Jesus Christ. But many have neglected or refused to accept the salvation which is offered by God in Christ. The Bible indicates that on that great day of judgment men will begin to pray and call upon God. But it will be too late. Since the war, God has given the United States, Germany, Great Britain, and the world many opportunities to repent. The Bible says that the goodness of God should be leading us to repentance. But we have drifted from God. We have blatantly broken the Ten Commandments. We have defied God by the materialistic, secular lives that we live. Therefore, what is happening in Great Britain and the United States today could easily be the beginning of God's judgment upon us as a people. We have had a form of religion, but denied the power of it. We have served God with our lips, but our hearts were far from him. We have been filling our churches on Sunday in the United States, but we have filled the nightclubs on Saturday night. The Bible says there will come a time when we will call upon God, but he will not answer. In other words, there's a point that a man or a nation can reach beyond which there is no return. I've searched the scriptures and cannot find any indication that man will have a second chance after the day of judgment. In this glorious age of grace, God the Holy Spirit is speaking, wooing, and reproving. He is calling upon people all over the world to a life of self-denial and cross-bearing and faith. Proverbs 29 says, He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. In other words, God is reproving the world, but if men go on neglecting or rejecting, they harden their hearts and judgment mounts with greater power than ever before. God reproves men both negatively and positively. He cautions them by righteous warnings and he attracts them with merciful love. The pendulum of his grace swings faithfully and untiringly in its majestic arc from the pole of judgment to the pole of mercy. If a man is lost, he will be lost because he ignored this faithful reproving of the Spirit of God. God's Spirit reproves men by his word. Throughout the scriptures are clear warnings about the fate of those who reject the claims of Christ upon their souls. God also reproves men by the righteous lives of fellow Christians. All of us know men and women in whose presence we find it easier to do right than wrong. An atheist once spent a few days with Fenelon and said, if I stay with this man of God much longer, I shall become a Christian in spite of myself. The quiet, convincing argument of a holy life had accomplished more in the life of an atheist than all the theological arguments and discussions he had ever heard. God also reproves men by the sight of sin's effects round about them. Every time you pass a penitentiary or a jail or a cemetery, it should remind you that sin does not pay. The people of Britain have been shocked by a member of the cabinet who admits to having an affair with a model and then to have lied to Parliament about it. He never dreamed in those hours of lovemaking that he would one day be caught and exposed and disgraced before the whole world. The British have recently had another scandal in which a duchess was divorced after she posed for nude photographs with her lover. She never thought that one day she would be exposed and disgraced before the whole world. The Bible says, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Someday, you're going to be exposed to the whole universe. The records of crime, of sin, and of lawlessness on the front pages of our daily newspapers prove that a life lived in defiance of God's law is lived in vain. Every time you read of defeated, confused, and bewildered famous people vainly searching for happiness and pleasure, you see an illustration of God's law that says, Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. A few years ago, a famous actress died at the age of 82. She was living in poverty. She made the statement to her neighbor, If I had my life to live over again, I would be entirely different. If she, as a beautiful young lady many years ago, had given her life to Christ, she would never have had regrets on her deathbed. If Marilyn Monroe had come to Jesus Christ, 
and found the joy and peace and security that he can bring, she would never have taken an overdose of sleeping pills. Many of you listening to my voice are now in the prime of life, but time is rapidly fleeting. Days are numbered. Turn your life over to Christ before it is too late. Yes, the Spirit of God is faithful, even through the newspapers, to reprove men and women who continue in their neglect of God. Within the mysterious recesses of the heart of man is hidden the power of decision. Man has been given the ability to make his own free choices. Within the heart of man are found both the possibility of rising to the highest heights and the possibility of sinking to the lowest depths. But once his direction is set, his choices confirm his decision. The man who makes his bed must lie in it. You can harden your heart by neglect. The popular notion that we must commit some awful sin to be lost is erroneous. We don't have to do a single thing to be lost. We are lost to begin with. The scripture says, He that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The Bible says that those who have hardened their hearts against God will someday pray to God, but it will be too late. The Bible warns they shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. Civilizations have perished because they ignored God, His precepts, and His mercy. The United States and the Western world may have splendid possibilities and a noble, wonderful background, but we may also be God's prodigal. We are certainly not God's pet. If we continue in the direction we are going, I warn you that judgment is going to become worse and worse. Already we are seeing the beginning of judgment. How much more will it take before we arouse ourselves, repent of our sins, and turn to God? History provides us with the record of the certainty of God's judgment upon men who find it in their hearts to defy His law and to trample His mercy under their feet. Freedom that we have known in the United States is fast fleeting away. Our freedoms are now in serious danger. And this is a judgment from God because of our sins we must turn to God before it is too late, and our country has drifted too far. Pompeii, a city now known for its perversion and depravity, was totally destroyed in 79 AD by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius. Judgment came to that city just a dozen years after Paul had preached the gospel nearby. It shows the road to self-indulgence, sin, and debauchery rather than God's way. Many of Rome's political leaders died along with thousands of other victims in that sensual resort city. We as individuals face a tragic end if, having been often reproved, we harden our heart and reject Christ's pleadings. The age-old excuse is there's plenty of time. But ladies and gentlemen, the events of the past few weeks around the world indicate there is not plenty of time. We are beginning to see that time is running out. Today, the swift moving pace of events of God's calendar is quickened. The present world chaos would suggest that we may be on the threshold of new climactic events. The Apostle Paul warned, for we know that all of creation is groaning and travailing. Come to Christ while you can. During the past week here in Germany, we have seen hundreds come to a saving knowledge of Christ. Why not join them and receive Christ as your Lord and Savior before it is too late? Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, as we see the world exploding all around us, we pray that the Holy Spirit will give to us quietness of heart, but also if He convicts us of sin, may we repent of our sin and turn to Christ by faith. For we ask it in his name. Amen.